Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Today we're going to be talking about family annihilator Chris Watts and the events that led up to him taking the lives of his entire family. His wife and daughters, Shannon, Bella, and Cece. Shannon and Chris Watts actually met on Facebook in 2010 while Shannon was still living in North Carolina. Shannon was actually just recently divorced from her first marriage and not too many sources go into exactly what happened. All we really know about that marriage is that it didn't really last that long. Two years after meeting on Facebook, Chris and Shannon Watts decide to get married. The pair got married on November 3rd, 2012 in Charlotte, North Carolina. After getting married, Chris Watts got a really good job opportunity up in Colorado, so the pair decided to move out there. And as the pair started their life together, it was seen all over Shannon's social media. So we just shared our Thrive Bites. Um, I made some of them a lot bigger than, um, or bigger than I normally would, um, but, hey Michelle, but there you go. She would post little vlogs and pictures and updates, and from looking at her social media, they seemed like a really happy couple. These videos are all even more chilling to watch when you know how this story ends. One year after the couple's marriage and move to Colorado, Shannon Watts gives birth to their first daughter. Bella Marie Watts was born on December 17th, 2013, and Shannon Watts was in love with her. Her obituary actually states that Shannon spent every moment thanking God for blessing her with such a gift. The two were very excited for this baby. I mean, they were starting a freaking family. And just two years after Bella was born, Shannon gave birth to Celeste, their second daughter. Celeste Catherine Watts was born on July 17th, 2015. Shannon unfortunately had the autoimmune disease lupus. And as she struggled with her health, she always said her biggest motivation were her two daughters. She wanted to stay healthy for Celeste and Bella. The same year that Celeste was born, the couple started to to face some really intense financial troubles. They were struggling to make car and mortgage payments and they were in really deep credit card debt, like the type of credit card debt that they could not get out of. They were starting to get overwhelmed because the two of them together weren't making enough money to make ends meet. And with two daughters to take care of, they had no choice but to file for bankruptcy. It seems that after filing for bankruptcy, everything kind of went south for the family. Financial troubles were kind of the catapult for all the other problems that are rose later in their relationship. Now in the absolute midst of these terrible financial troubles and bankruptcy that they're in, Shannon gets pregnant with her third baby. And despite all of their current struggles, Shannon felt really blessed by this baby. So on June 11th, 2018, Shannon surprised Chris Watts with a pregnancy video. In the video, she wore a shirt that said, oops, we did it again, and tells Chris Watts, her husband, that she is expecting their third baby. So pink means... That's just the test. I know. It just says the pink is gonna be girls. I don't know. Just the test. That's awesome. But what Shannon didn't know was that it was around the same time that Chris Watts met and began communicating with a co-worker by the name of Nicole Kessinger. Sources say that the two would often see each other at work, they would just kind of run into each other, and eventually, despite the fact that he was married with children, he felt the need to strike up a conversation with this woman. Supposedly, Chris went up to Nicole Kessinger in front of her office and struck up a conversation. This conversation led to their relationship evolving over time and just within two months, the two started having an affair. Chris was supposedly going to see Nicole four to five times a week, all while Shannon is carrying his freaking baby. What an asshole. Now, if you're wondering how things look like from Nicole Kessinger's perspective, I'll tell you. Supposedly, Chris Watts was telling Nicole Kessinger that he was in the midst of a divorce. Newsflash, he was not in the midst of a divorce. He was in the midst of having another child, not a freaking divorce. Anyway, so he tells his mistress that he is working on divorcing his wife, Shannon. And when Shannon and the girls take a trip to North Carolina to visit Shannon's family, Chris Watts takes the opportunity to tell his mistress that his divorce divorce with Shannon was finalized. The divorce was not finalized because there was no divorce to begin with. This guy was 
blatantly lying to his mistress. Now eventually Shannon comes back from this trip with her kids and they're back to being a family. Shannon's pregnant, Chris is having this affair, Shannon has no idea that he's having an affair, and Chris decides, you know what, I'm gonna go fly and visit my family. But before he leaves, he writes Nicole, his mistress, a love note. So Chris Watts was romantic enough to leave his mistress a love letter, but not romantic enough to maintain the relationship with his wife. Because it was on this trip to visit his family that problems between Shannon and Chris Watts really started. Shannon was starting to get upset by Chris's behavior because he was growing distant. He wasn't as involved with the kids and with her pregnancy as much as she hoped he would be. So while he's on this trip, text messages revealed that the two were arguing a lot. She was complaining to him about everything that was bothering her and she even questioned his loyalty. Now supposedly Shannon had brought this up before because she was suspicious of him cheating before but anytime Shannon brought this up to Chris he would always fully deny ever cheating on her. Despite all of this arguing between the couple on August 9th 2018 right before Shannon was meant to leave on a work trip to Arizona she tells a really close friend that her and Chris had talked about their issues and supposedly had a really good conversation. It seemed like the two really worked things out. So much so that before Shannon left for this work trip, she wrote Chris a handwritten letter. So things were really starting to look up for the couple. But while Shannon is on this work trip, Chris has other plans. He hires a babysitter and tells Shannon that he's going to a baseball game with his friends. You guessed it, this man went to a bar with Nicole. Around 2 a.m. on August 13th is when Shannon lands back and is picked up by a friend named Nicole Atkinson from the airport. Nicole Atkinson drops Shannon off at her family home and that was the last moment that Shannon Watts was seen alive. Now from this point on, I'm gonna start to tell the story based on what actually happened not based on the lies that Chris tried to feed the law enforcement and the family of the victim. Because this guy tried to pull every excuse in the book. I'll, I'll touch on that later. But let's talk about what Chris did and what really went down in this household. Because it's freaking disgusting and he is a monster. That same morning that Shannon returned from her work trip, Chris wakes up and gets ready for work. Before Chris leaves to work, he decides that he wants to wake Shannon up and have a talk. So he wakes her up and he tells her, despite her presence, pregnancy and despite everything, he has been having an affair and he wants this marriage to end. Now you have to really imagine hearing this from Shannon's point of view. She was probably completely blindsided by this because she had no freaking idea. Yeah, she had some doubts and fears, but in her head, her marriage was going, I mean, pretty well. So when Shannon hears this, she looks Chris straight in the eye and says, you are never going to see your children ever again. And it was in that moment that Chris Watts decided to take Shannon Watts' life by strangulation. At this moment, their oldest daughter, Bella, who was four at the time, runs into the room and says, is mommy okay? What's wrong with mommy? But Chris doesn't say anything. He grabs Bella, he goes, gets Cece, and puts them in the back of his car. He takes Shannon's body, throws it in the trunk, and drives away to a work site. Chris believed that his work site would be a perfect place for a dumping spot because it was basically just two oil tanks in the middle of nowhere. Once Chris Watts gets to the oil tanks is when he decides to take the lives of his two daughters, Bella and Cece. He then shoves the both of them in the oil tanks separately and buries Shannon in a shallow grave close to the oil tanks. Chris Watts wouldn't even allow his family to rest peacefully together. He had to separate their bodies. Now that is the truth and that is what Chris Watts did. But before we found out all of this, Chris tried to play the widower card really well. Shannon's friend Nicole Atkinson, the one that dropped her from the airport to her house, House, hadn't heard from Shannon in a while and she was worried if something had happened to her so she went over to Shannon's house. Shannon wasn't home, she wasn't opening the door, Chris wasn't home. Now Nicole Atkinson is one bad ass let me tell you. She is the type of friend that you want because she was fighting for Shannon when no one else was. She called police before Chris Watts ever did and reported Shannon missing. Police rushed to the house where Chris met up with them. They walked through the entire house, they talked to Chris, and right off the bat, nothing was adding up to anyone. Chris looked suspicious to Nicole Atkinson, to all the police officers, basically to anyone who spoke to him. After Shannon and the girls were reported missing, Chris actually went on national television begging for their safe return I just want them back <laughs> I just I just want them to come back and if if they're not safe right now that's what's that's what's tearing me apart because if they are safe they're coming back but if they're not 
this 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 has got to stop like somebody has to come forward people noticed very quickly that this guy is a total weirdo you would imagine a man in this situation would be in absolute distress but chris seemed a little too calm when chris was initially arrested he denied being involved in anything he had a theory that shannon picked the girls up and ran away but as police kept pushing for answers he was kind of running out of excuses you guys police interviewed chris watts for hours because they really had to find a way to get him to confess to these murders after his theory of shannon running away didn't make sense to the police he thought of another excuse he tried to tell police you know what i did take my wife's life but that's only because she attacked my kids now police weren't really happy with this confession either because it just simply made no sense to them so they keep pushing chris hoping for a confession and chris says you know what if i'm gonna say what happened i want to talk to my father so the detectives get chris watt's father to sit in the interrogation room with him one-on-one -on -one so that chris can tell him exactly what happened and when the two sit down to talk chris tells his father the full truth of what he actually did to the girls which is exactly what i told you a few minutes ago chris fully admitted to taking the lives of his entire family he has in very great detail described everything that has happened in the crime and fully admits that he did it i'm sure you can imagine his father was in absolute shock i mean you can go see the video it was really really devastating for his father to hear that however the detectives had exactly what they need to prosecute him chris was found guilty and charged of three counts of first degree murder and one count of unlawful termination of a pregnancy because unfortunately at the time that this took place shannon was pregnant with their third baby. I mean, this guy is an absolute freaking monster. Chris Watts is the perfect example of a family annihilator. He was a man in his 30s with marriage and financial issues. He was having this secret affair the entire time. He was unhappy with his life. And instead of choosing to simply walk away from the life that he was unhappy with, he decided that he had to take the lives of his entire family with him. Absolutely screw this guy, okay? I freaking hate him. I've heard this case so many times. I freaking get so pissed every time I talk about it because it's like why do men think they can just do these things? Chris Watts is now rotting in jail which is exactly what he freaking deserves. I pray to God that he has the most horrible traumatizing time in prison ever. All right you guys that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next time when we talk about yet another monster. Bye.